and this is sunny but off the track thoroughbred that Dave Evans is training for us and uh, we're going to film Dave and watch Dave work with Sonny just a little bit so that you can see what we're doing. Uh, Dave, describe for us today what you're going to be doing with Sonny for this lesson. Marla, what I'm going to do with Sonny is continue to build on what we've done in the past, which is try to basically work him back down from the jiggy trot to a loose rein walk. And we've made some progress with that. He's done real well. If you look at him here, you can see he's got his head down, he's relaxed. We've got him standing still while we mount, which of course is something that's very important. It's a safety issue. It's something that you need to do with any horse that, that anybody rides on a regular basis. The, the walking is, is improving quite a bit. He's dropping his head and we're able to work him on a loose rein. I'm able to ride him with one hand. If, I'm, if you see me riding him with one hand, generally what that's indicating is that he's loose enough for me to let him have more rein than I normally would. If you see me riding him with two hands, I'm generally making some kind of correction. So what we're gonna do today is ride him around here a little bit. We'll stop him, back him up a little, hopefully have him walking on the loose rein with his head down, and then maybe trot just a little bit. One thing that's very important is to make sure that he does not step off until we're ready to go. Too many times, especially when people are riding together, they have a tendency for the lead rider to take off before all riders around him. This happens generally when you're going through gates and things that require that the, the group spread out a little bit. You want him to stand still until you're ready to go. And as you'll see here, he's doing a good job with that. As I get on him, you'll notice I didn't come down hard in the saddle. I came down gently. You don't want to do anything that's going to, to cause any discomfort any more than is necessary. So he's here. He's settled. I'll make whatever adjustment I need to with the reins. Um, generally speaking, if I'm riding him to train him, I'm going to have a bridge built between two hands here just in front of the saddle horn um, with enough slack in the rein to where there's no tension on the hackamore. But this hackamore, Dave, tell us a little bit about it. I know you put it together and it's working real well for Sonny. Well, you see a lot of things that are called hackamores. Uh, you see a mechanical hackamore that's got shanks on it. Um, that's not a hackamore. This is basically a traditional uh, California hackamore with a bosal and the knots that support the, the bosal at the bottom is a hackamore knot tied around the heel um, of the bosal and then up under the throat latch is a knot that's called a feodor and it supports, it supports the bosal in a position to where there is it's, it's e evenly balanced on the horse's nose. Well, it, Sonny's doing really well with it. I, if uh, this, now the reins that I use with the Hackamore are a little different. A traditional Makati rein would have a lead rope coming through the bottom of that loop below the heel knot, which would allow you to, to uh, control the horse if necessary from the ground and there would be a closed rein, a loop rein rather than the open reins that I'm using here. The open reins are just a little easier for me to control um, and one thing that you'll notice about them, they're long enough that if you drop them they stay on the horse's neck. You don't have one that's going to fall to the ground which would happen if they were short. So that's one thing that you learn to do through experience. And I, I braided these reins out just from a piece of, of hemp rope. And uh, let's see how he's going to do this.